Hello, and welcome to That One Idea, a podcast series chronicling early stage founder journeys brought to you by Waterbridge Ventures. Through this podcast series, we hope to bring out the founder moments and journeys that lead them to starting up. We highlight the humans behind the founders as they blitz through the zero to one scale journey and transition their ideas into scale worthy businesses. These conversations reveal the unique spirit and talent of these incredible founders as they share their vision of who they are and what they're building. In today's episode, we have Ashish Jain in conversation with Mukul and Vinit, co founders of MoveIn. MoveIn has identified a lack of financial awareness and access to financial products amongst Indian teens and young adults as a key problem statement. The MoveIn team is building a digital first new bank to fill this white space and provide their TG with a full stack financial solution. Hello Mukund and Vineet and welcome to this podcast. Hope both of you are ready and excited. Hi Ashish, thank you for having us. Looking forward to having an engaging discussion with you and uh, talking a little bit more about what we're doing at Movin. Great and thanks both of you for traveling down to our office and it's really great to have you here. So let's start. Let's start from where you began your journey. So you uh, have known each other since your early days at Mindtree. Do you think having known each other for a long period of time eases your journey as co-founders or does it make you too predictable for each other? I think, Ashish, that's a great question to start with. Mm. I think as co-founders, one of the things when we start a journey, you know, of building a starter, which is like having a baby. So you look at, you know, certain factors which you look at in your co-founder or partner in this journey. So some of the aspects which come to mind is just a shared value system in terms of and multiple values like integrity, transparency. So in some context, having known your co-founder partner from earlier helps you build that from an early stage. So, so, you know, you worked in the same company, you worked in the same organization, you still know common set of friends. So there's a, there's that feeling of, you know, trust, shared values, which comes in from the early part itself. So I yeah. think that's where having known someone helps. And I think it, it's, it's great to find someone from your network to begin that journey with. And Mukun, do you think it makes you guys too predictable? Like you can predict almost what Vineet is going to say or how he's going to respond to a particular problem? Yeah, yes. I mean, look, that that's an interesting one. Sometimes, yes. But I think given the fact that both me and Vineet met each other almost like, what, 20, 23 years ago, 2000. I think that was the first time me and Vineet met each other. And we worked together for a brief period. And then we kind of, you know, went our own ways from a, even within Mindtree, right? So we, while we were always catching up, you know, at, at town halls or Mindtree gathering events or whatever, I think there was still that element of, yes, we know who each other are, is or are, and we kind of understood each other's professional competencies. But along the way, obviously, we did our own thing, right? And now we've reconnected after, you know, that, that period of time. So I think each of us have grown from when we first met each other, you know, 20, 20, 23 years ago. So there is still that level of unpredictability, I think, that sometimes is does come to the table and in a pleasant way, right? Because sometimes, you know, I, I kind of... Uh, ask, think to myself, should I, should I go and broach, you know, we need with some crazy idea and most, more, most often than not, you know, he comes back to me with obviously a measured response to that, but quite a few times just like, Hey man, let's go for it. Right. So, so I think that level of comfort we have with each other and being completely transparent and honest about, you know, each other's thoughts, ideas, and discuss that in a very collaborative and open manner. But at the same time, not expecting, you know, the, the, what you would call as a cookie cutter answer. I think that brings an element of, I think, dynamic working style or relationship amongst both of us. No, that's great. That's great. And it is fantastic to have, you know, founders who have known each other for such a long period and have grown together in, you know, multi-dimensional aspects in various ways, and which is good. You both are second time founders and have significant domain expertise. How is that helping you build moving? So I, I think Ashish, I think, you know, for, from both our perspectives, I think, as you rightly said, we are second time entrepreneurs. I think again, there again, I would like to stress that 
we did very different things in fact i my first entrepreneurial gig was i ran an it services company we did implementations of trading systems for very large banks primarily in the southeast asia region including india in fact we also did a couple of them in the middle east you know so we, i came you know so so whatever experience i gained in mindtree kind of continued on to my next entrepreneurial gig as well you know where we really did a lot of uh, system integration work i think you know the the kind of advantage i guess that that i have probably built after running that business over 9 years is to deal with ups and downs in the most i would say rational manner you know i still go back to my early days in my first gig when we started the company late 2007 Uh, we were doing treasury implementations and in 2008 we had the lehman brothers crisis that happened couldn't have been at a better time or a worse time which are way you look at looked at it you know but uh, but i think it 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 kind of taught us that nothing is going to come easy everything this is a long game you have to you have to grind it out there will be ups and downs and i think that has i think instilled at least in me a sense of you know what i would call you know running like a marathon right you you build endurance and i think that's the kind of you know mentality and mindset that that we have brought to moving as well I think so I think it has its advantages so I think being a second stint you know having come out from essentially a large corporate you take a lot of things for granted you know setting up a company in India with its own things and while funding has become easier in the last couple of years there are a lot of things so which founder has to do so it's a it's it's essentially a lot of things you need to start understanding it's a the first time i would say is something you still learning a lot of stuff about funding setting up the corporate structure at what point do you start bringing some processes while you are still solving the business problem i think the second time obviously it become easier you you know you've done it before so you know what you're going into and i think it's a it's a much more i would say easier if i can say that it does make it a little bit easier because you know what you're expecting as compared to a you know shock which you will i would say the first 6 months or one year of my first startup was that when you realize that hey you know you never seen the legal documents in those manner in what we are supposed to do like you are signing on everything you you are essentially the master and then it also builds respect for the company which you are working in so i go back to you know mindtree when we were small in mindtree so i went back and told the founders now we understand what you were going through in the initial day that that time as employees our reaction to sometime things in terms of not being available you they were still a startup you're still a startup so everything is not going to be anti dory in the initial stage till you reach to a certain scale i think that appreciation gets built once you have done one stint away you know what to expect and how to plan for some of the things which we need to do in terms of be it raising money you taking difficult choices every day in terms of where you which feature to launch which product to launch so and and that's why i think having a partner also helps that because if i was to do it alone it makes the journey a little bit more difficult and stressful as well yeah no i think it's almost sounding like you are saying that you know first time parents are more anxious and by the time they get to their second kid they're settled and they know what yeah. to expect i think you are right i as i say it's like having a baby so have you you done it once i think the second time makes it easier because you know what anxiety the baby is going to have you know what all the other people surrounding that will have so you i'm sure you know as if someone was to do the third time around it's like they they can almost you know predict what 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 to expect coming to the name the name movin combines both of your names so who came up with this and what more does the name represent So I think you know so the naming today it was a long drawn exercise Ashish to be honest you know we almost took close to 4 to 5 months to <clears throat> finalize the name all the names we were coming up with whichever we liked you know trying to make sure we have the domain name available we can trademark it we can copyright it someone else is not doing something it was you know it's it i think it's 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 not a easy exercise to yeah. find the appropriate name so i think in our context it was largely our close group of friends where we were sharing what we are doing and what's the name we are naming this so i think so in fact the person who named it who suggested this name was chetan bhagat so we have you know chetan bhagat was a 
part of the close set of friends so we still have that one typically frat group the same you can say the floor or the close set of 20 to 25 friends who graduated from iit delhi and that's where that circle you know is connected today and that's where we share each one of us shares what we are doing any new thing we are doing that's where when i shared about the journey this was the name there were multiple people who suggested multiple name but and chetan suggested movin i think everyone in the group loved it and and i think i shared it that with mokan the same time almost and and i think all of us loved it and we found that was a name which was not taken you could build a property around it and it 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 was a name which resonated with what we were doing and that's how the name came about I it was think, almost uh, like it was meant to happen <laughs> yeah I, and i think more than that ashish i think the look we are we are talking to a very young audience right and i think one of the questions that somebody asked me the other day when i met them you know one of these you know networking events or whatever is most of the other traditional fintech companies in india you know they have their name has an element of finance in it like there is a pay in it or there is there is something else you know which is kind of has an auto correlation to the world of finance right and we actually took a little bit of inspiration as well you know from some of the companies you know who do similar work like us in the us who have taken a very you know left field approach to creating a brand and i think at the end of the day you know our feeling was that the brand by itself represents what we are trying to do for the tg which is to take them one step closer or one step forward in their journey to achieving financial independence and becoming more financially aware so in fact sometime middle of last year we actually did a rebranding exercise and one of the questions we actually posed to the agency was do you think we should change our name and the agency said please you know anything else you change you can do it but do not change the name because it's a verb right so get moving with your investments or get moving with your you know your your financial awareness or, you know so there are many ways in which the word moving can be used you know it it represents moving forward it represents taking the next step or the first step and and i think very very much aligns with what we have set out to do at at at, at the company yeah no that's excellent actually to to uh, the name actually is so thoughtful and uh, you know and the fact that it combines both the founding members names that's that's fairly uncommon <laughs> so congrats for such an impressive name thank uh, you so both of you have kids who belong to the movin tg did that help you identify with the problem statement and the tg for movin or were there any or were there any other real life issues that you faced or observed that led to you know you thinking about the problem statement at move in and then trying to solve i think definitely the answer is yes so a little bit going back into you know the history just before we started with with move in so i have a 9 he's 19 years old right now my son pursuing his engineering studies so when 2019 came actually we moved into 2020 it was the beginning of the whole you know covid you know a phase of our lives right and my son ended up spending a fair amount of his time at home and he was preparing for his 11th and 12th you know there was a lot of you know exam study related stuff he had to to finish in very short periods of time in more long hours at you know obviously you know covering the stuff that he had to do from a from a preparation perspective so his his biggest companion during those days were the food food ordering apps you know so at night 11:30 11 o'clock he would decide that he is hungry and he needed you know maybe a burger or a pizza or a roll or whatever and and then it would be like knock on my door and saying hey dad can i get the otp you know on one of your upi apps or can i borrow a card you know whatever right so he was extremely tethered to me from a day to day financial transaction perspective which was i think one part of the problem statement the second part of the problem statement that you know, that that i kind of discovered as i spent time with him is one day he came up to me and he said hey you know what nanu has given me you know this uh, you know this awesome amount of cash for my birthday can i buy stock right can i invest in stock markets and that's when i started having a discussion with him you know about stock markets trying to understand how much he knew didn't know and then i realized that you know that there is a there is a gap right uh, leave aside you know i would say slightly more complex topics like you know like for example stock market but for example things like savings versus investments right why would you invest rather than save how does it make a big deal for you from a inflation beating perspective why is it important to start investing from an early age so these were discussions we started having at the dining table and then i realized that 
these are discussions probably a lot of parents in india today are having with their children right today we have the benefit of technology today we have the benefit of data we have access to information there are so many fintech players out there today who have democratized access to a whole bunch of products but somehow this generation has will start going into adulthood with very little knowledge and more fearfully half knowledge so i think in our context especially and especially from my own personal perspective those dinner table discussions around the stock markets and trading and and investments i think played a very important part in the conceptualization of of moving so i think she so uh, i had a 15 year old daughter while we had opened a bank account for her i think we also started realizing and we were telling her all the money you are getting through the year we are depositing in that you know so all the tricks which parents used to make the children learn in terms of rewarding them with money or finishing certain tasks while she had outgrown that we were also trying to you know setting the foundation for making her financially independent to say okay we'll start giving you pocket money now and you manage your own money you decide where you want to spend and then we realized the traditional banking accounts still had their challenges in terms of the child being able to use that freely while they could have got a atm card but it was not a pure product which allows you to do digital payments easily i think the world had changed the world had changed in terms of them being able to access the money when they want it in the manner they want it and also being able to understand how much money they have at any point in time and also allow them to manage that money better in terms of being able to you know if they want a you know fancy product to say hey you save towards it you know i will match 40% 50% whatever rules we set for her but she had to do that on her own and then we realized that that's a pain point today because nothing existed while as adults we had all got used to the payment apps which are linked to our banking account the same thing doesn't work well for the children of today and i think at the same time we realized that you know while they were being taught some of the concepts in school what we also realized in conversation with our daughter is that her understanding of the real world money in terms of the value of money where does it come from you know really understanding appreciating the finer nuances was still at a very rudimentary level and and that to some extent helped us understand you know that was kind of the motivation that this is a real problem because we couldn't find a solution to it and then when i went and spoke to a lot of people in our peer group you know everyone was going through the same challenges and people were trying of finding you know work around to say this is how i have achieved it but it was still not a solution which gave them not only the ability to do transaction but also the ability to learn along the way because it's not only about enabling transaction it's also about do they understand all the different aspects of managing their own money and 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 that's that's what we said is 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 something which is a pain point in india it's a it's a new category and that's what we strive towards solving when we uh, embarked on the journey to build move in Yeah, great, great, great. So, Movin is in fact a much late entrant to the overall neo banking space. In what ways do you see that as a challenge, and in what ways is that an opportunity for Movin? So, I think the as I said just briefly earlier, this is a new category, and you, there could have been players who launched before us, like a six to twelve months before us, but it. it and being a new category i think gives you an opportunity to be able to you know understand what the people who did before us were doing you could learn from their mistakes understand what their customers are saying and and not repeat the same thing so that's where while the opportunity is but it's still a challenge that because you are attacking a new category you know you still have to build the brand you still have to build the category along the way so i think we were not too far behind in terms of the other player we would say at max you know we would have been a year behind so to it works it cuts both ways i think from a investor perspective you know something a new idea typically if they are unique it tends to get funding much more easily because they are the first one they are unique to do it by the time 
you know, we were starting, we also discovered there were other players also who had come in. Everyone, a lot of people realized there's an opportunity here. And, and, and we know today there are multiple players who are trying to solve the problem. So, so, you know, it, it's both good and bad because it is giving an opportunity for everyone to grow the category. We believe it's not that we are cannibalizing on each other. We are still with such a, huge audience, huge base in India. So we still are all growing the category. There might be a small percentage overlap between us in terms of common customer. But that's the, I think that's the opportunity. So it, it, it has, as you rightly mentioned, both positives and negative when you look at different aspects of building a startup. Yeah. And Vakunt, how do you see this? Yeah. I think I think uh, very rightly said by Vineet. I think there are there are pros and cons. But as Vineet rightly said, and he used the word category. So you know, I take an example of UPI. UPI before COVID happened was still a, a platform that was struggling to scale. And I think once COVID you know came and people were forced to transact from the comfort of their home, contactless payments became the preferred way. It just went to another level, right? It's now become a habit. And I think the word habit is a, is a very important part in this discussion because I don't think the market is anywhere close today to at a state where where us or any of our competitors have made the, the product or the, the kind of usage of the product a habit for the target audience, right? It's it's I think for a large extent, it's still a nice to have. In some cases, it's become a must to have, but has it become a habit where naturally people say, okay, when my child hits the age of 14 or 15, like like I would go and buy like a like LIC, you know, even GMA, whatever policy or whatever. Can I, for example, now I will also as part of my checklist, get him or her, you know, a kind of a payment app, right? A teen friendly payment app. So I think I think the market is is largely unpenetrated. As per the last official census, I think about 350 to 370 million people are in the TG that we are talking to and 140 million Households are moving up the economy value chain to become into middle class. So it is an expanding pie, right? And every year that pie keeps getting replenished by the people who are below our TG coming into the TG. So I, I think I think it is it is very early in the discussions. There are some front runners obviously today who have you know obviously as Vineet said have started a bit earlier than us. But I think as as Vineet rightly said, the category is new. And the habit is yet to be developed. So we do believe that in some ways also I take it a little bit as an advantage that. The people who came before us has, have helped us to at least market the category, you know, and create a little bit of awareness in the market about the fact that such an option exists for your young teenage children. But has it, like I said, become a habit? I, I don't think so. I think there's a long way to go. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. One of the key differentiator at Movin is the way you guys are executing and your vision encompasses a full stack solution for your TG. So can you guys just elaborate on that or your vision, especially in terms of building a full stack solution for the TG rather than just solving for a part of a problem, you're trying to solve everything for them. Yep, right. Valid question there, Ashish. So I, I think look from our execution perspective, today we've gone live with a version of the app that solves or tries to solve at least one problem statement. But I think when you look at it as a whole and when you look at access to financial services and products, in a seamless manner for young adults in India, I think that the problem statement has still a lot to be solved for, right? And and we believe that the way we are going to solve it will be slightly unique in the fact that we almost want to be like financial, like a financial concierge, for lack of a better word, to our young audience. Because, you know, a, one of the things that we realized that happened, you know, sometime in 2021 and 2022 is there was a proliferation of small ticket loan loan apps. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of young Indians, you know, fell fell into that trap and it resulted in a lot of social problems. And, and I think a lot of that boils down to the fact that people or, or our young Indians today sign up for products sometime without fully understanding what's hidden behind it. Right. So disclaimers obviously are provided for by, you know, all the product selling companies. But, you know, it's, it's I think many of the young, young Indians today pay lip service to it. They don't really understand it fully or try to understand it fully. We believe that we want to take a slightly more, I would say, concierge based approach where almost we are like a coach. Right. We, we don't want to obviously, you know, give them investment advice and saying, OK, invest in these four funds. But we want we want to give them the right amount of information and the right amount of guidance 
so that when they do make that choice and in whatever product that they do invest in or or borrow from or whatever else that they do it from a, you know from an app perspective that they do it with the right amount of knowledge and awareness so they know exactly what they're signing up for so by the time they get to 25 26 27 they then have an you know like a swiss knife of financial knowledge with them that they can then take to further grow their wealth right so we're not here in the process of making people rich we are here as in the process to help people grow their wealth yeah so i think uh, i think as mokon the liu did i think this the building a product you know takes time you know so you either take a swiss knife approach and say i'll build all 20 features and have a little bit of each one of them or you build a few of them and do that one two three thing which you are doing very well i think for us you know we believe the product is what you stand for you want to create a you know very different experience and execution is going to be key because a customer who comes in you know this tg has a very short attention span unless you can engage them and you know convince them that this is the right product we are going to lose them as well very quickly so we obviously taken a conscious call to be you know very careful about all the features which we are launching to at least have you know a decent set while the traditional mvp approach of you know being able to launch something quickly and grow still old good but whatever that mvp version also has to stand you know a certain level of quality so that's that's what you know has been the thinking process behind the product so a lot of the foundational stones you know have been built in the journey we have taken so far i think the next 9 to 12 months will all see us putting lot of the other features around that because now the core foundation has been set i and i think the financial services one aspect you know i would like to highlight it's it's like a iceberg you know what the customer sees is 10% 15% of what really we have built you know when you look at a financial system there is you, how do you ensure the transaction sanctity how do you ensure the back office reconciliation how do you ensure reporting you know there, you can't go wrong in some of those aspects in terms of you know different rules which you have to put in from day one what kind of you know fraud detection rule how do you make the app secure being a financial app you know it makes it much more important for us to ensure that there's element of safety trust in the application which we are building a lot of that is not visible to the customers immediately and 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 i think that spot is is what i think the first 12 to 18 months of our journey has been in terms of being able to set that strong foundation and once that has been created now building you know new features becomes much more easier going ahead no i think that you guys are doing a superb job at laying down the strong rails for a scalable business and the past one year has been you know a testimony to all the hard work that has gone behind this so congratulations for that thank you so moving recently adopted new brand imagery and colors what was the objective of this and what is the feedback that you have received on this exercise yep i think so like i mentioned earlier ashish so we we kind of revisited our brand story you know sometime in the middle of last year and i think the reason that happened is because i i'm not sure if you remember our earlier branding but we had like a multi color logo a little bit you know fattish kind of an appearance and teal or a kind of variation of teal was the primary color that you know that, that drove our our application interface and you know so we got increasing feedback from customers that the that the color by itself was not appealing to obviously from a young generation you know tg perspective secondly is also a little bit i would say out of the realm when you look at financial services products right traditionally financial services products have operated you know the more traditional banks have operated on a shade of blue you know which we also blue or red you know and, and i think have been the dominant colors that have driven financial services platforms but we felt that while we like the color blue and it's, it's quite a serious color it wasn't playful enough right and so that's when we said okay look we obviously can't solve this problem statement on our own so we went to an agency based in bangalore we said look we want to reinvent the brand we we feel it's become a little bit 
too boring. You need to bring some excitement to the brand, make it more representative of what DG does. But at the same point in time, we also wanted to have a little bit of formality. And the reason this is important in our in our brand positioning is that we are not here to deliver entertainment, right? We are not here to be a Netflix or anything of those other big brands who are generating some awesome content and and keeping young India, you know, actively entertained, right? Via medium. We are here to solve the problem statement related to money. Money is a serious topic. It involves trust. It involves integrity. But at the same point in time, we don't want it to be boring, right? Because it is a difficult concept for young India already to assimilate. And secondly, when you approach it from a very traditional teacher student perspective you know that kind of a philosophy or mentality it makes it even more boring and almost becomes intimidating right so so we kind of you know i think you know circled the hoops got multiple design options you know from our agency and then we settled on the primary color that's driving the app today which we call as merple right and i think it's it's vibrant yet a little bit formal because it does have an element of blue in it but it also lends itself to playfulness right and, and so that's the reason we kind of you know navigated towards the brand we also did an entire rebranding of the ui and the ux and i think you know i let Vineet you know speak about the journey for that but i would say overall from both an external and an internal perspective maybe it was just you know luck or fluke but i think a strong factor behind that enormous user growth over the last i would say 3 to 4 months is, has been very linked to the rebranding. So how was your experience in executing the UI UX and because brand change from a product perspective can, can be very demanding. True. So I think the, I would say the first brand launch, you know, how we were looking at it was the MVP version of it. So we will, you know, typically there was still a smaller team, which was managing all the communications or one of the aspect as the team grew, as the communication grew, we also felt that, you know, the overall identity, the brand manual, we need to invest in doing some of that as well. You know, how do you create a common playbook? from a marketing messages, brand messages, which everyone in the team understand. And that has different aspect, but as Mukund highlighted, one of the aspect was even in the application, how do we do that? It's no longer, you know, the developers looking at and saying, okay, this is the common color font and that's what it is to the brand. It's also about, you know, the experience part of it. How do you deliver some of the features which also had to get a common playbook? And I think that's what, the new identity, while we, what we see is the logo and the colors, but there's a lot of, you know, nuts and bolts behind it in terms of the overall experience, you know, in terms of some of the aspects which goes in ensuring that, you know, people see some aspect and they can easily correlate that, yeah, this is, this is moving. And, 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 and that's what you know, has gone in in terms of building that. While I would say, yeah, you know, a lot of things obviously were the last six months in terms of growth, which is the whole product foundation. But as Mukund mentioned, the overall brand identity resonation also, you know, played a large factor in terms of us achieving that growth over the last quarter. Yeah, and I think just to close on that topic, Ashish, I think for us, brand is not just the UI of the app. And I think that's where actually, when I look back now, it does, that was one of the primary reasons we went to the agencies because we have multiple touch points. We have, yeah. we have the, the app, we have the website, we have the card, you know, that the physical move-in card that, that we ship to, to our youngster, to the young audience of India. We also have the packaging in which that card is dispatched. So there were multiple, you know, elements through which consumers were consuming the brand, including our social media presence. So our Instagram handle, our LinkedIn, you know, presence, all of that. So when we looked at it, when we, when we took a step back, you know, from when we were, you know, living our old, old brand life, we realized that we had created a lot of, I would say, discoherence or whatever. It, it didn't, it didn't come together as one representative story that said, this color, this combination, this design style, when I look at it, I know it, I know it's moving, right? So I should be able to say that it's a moving card without even looking at like the name written on it. I should just look at the colors and say, hey, you know what? I know that's moving. So that's that's the other element I think that, that played a significant part in our rebranding. So a related question, your brand ambassador. So what was the thought process behind selecting him as your brand ambassador? Okay, so 
you know, I'll take a short stab at it. You know, our first investors who introduced us to Hardik. So Hardik was someone we all associated with. You know, cricket is something India loves. The youth loves that. So essentially, the good part was obviously in our first conversation, we also saw him excited about what we were trying to do and considering his own background. You know, the way he looked at the problem and what we are trying to do, he resonated with that very well. And I, I, I think we were just lucky to have him and be the brand ambassador for us. So I think it just happened at the right time, and that's definitely helped us in a big way in terms of the initial brand recall and identity as well. Yeah, yeah. So from my perspective, Ashish, I'm a huge cricket fan. Unfortunately, you know, I I, I stay awake late nights watching matches i also get very emotional you know when when india tends to lose but that's just me but look uh, I, i think as vinny said you know it was a, it was the stars that aligned and you know we we got hardik pandya as a brand ambassador but i i couldn't have asked for a better choice uh, i think when you look at his entire story right and i sometimes I, i pull you know pull his leg and saying that the moment he signed up with with movin is uh, you know when he his form just took off and uh, you know now he's become the captain of the indian t20 team so you know i'm, I'm hoping that somewhere it worked for him as well you know by signing up with us but jokes aside i think look i think he represents cool i i think he's i think he represents movin as what we want to be he's he is a player he 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 goes out there puts you know wears his uh, in a heart on his sleeve he plays for the country with with the 200% passion but you look at his instagram handle he's also cool he he's got swag he's got you know he he's got a certain style quotient he's a dad even right but he still you know got a certain element of you know just coolness right so he's while he's on the cricket field it's like you know absolute commitment and dedication to what he's you know doing for for team india and for the country but you know when he's on social media it's 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 another it's another right and i think that that in a way i think there's a very strong correlation between that kind of brand persona and and what we want to be at movin that hey we have fun you know we we want to have fun with you guys but look it's also a serious business money is not something to be to take trivially it's it's not something you can just you know you know uh, wish away it's 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 serious business we're talking about so yeah so we are here to have fun but let's also be a little bit more serious about this so i think it's a, it's a, i think it's a great combo in terms of the brand personas and hardik is a brand so great you got movin got hardik moving so that yeah. should be the tagline <laughs> there again see it became a verb yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah okay great so this brings me to the last question so how do you define scale for movin and where do you see it in 2030 okay so to us look obviously there are you know what one would call as north star metrics right in terms of number of users number of wallets number of active wallets transactions volumes all of that and i think there are a whole lot if i would say standard standard industry metrics that will unravel itself as we launch new products as we set out to deliver the full stack platform but i think to me honestly for me scale will will come you know when when hopefully you know when i when i think of you know a real world situation you know when i'm at a starbucks and there's a parent i don't know with their young teenager and the teenager actually tells that parent hey you know what that investment decision that you and papa were going to make you know yesterday i don't think it's a right decision because these are the factors that you have to keep in mind while while making such a choice and uh, you know i read all about this on movin and you know it, uh, you know so i'm just letting you know that you know and they came to my school they ran this workshop and maybe you should you know take a step back and reevaluate it. to me that is that is the definition of i would say success and scale that i'll you know that we i think would be really proud about is when we start making a material difference to how young india approaches money and how young india will become will reach a point where they can guide you know the slightly older india into making the best decisions for themselves and to, to me that is scale you know where your you, your your messaging and your knowledge just becomes a part of the fabric of society and what they are consuming in terms of a knowledge perspective we need any thoughts yeah yeah and obviously they should pay in starbucks <laughs> using the movin <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> method of payments will change but you know with variables coming in we are already experimenting with a few of the variables because today phone is a form factor do do i really need to scan it you know the equivalent of the just being able to wave your phone or you know wave your biometric whatever to make the payment happen all of that will become a reality but i think as as i think the the numbers i think will happen as we as we know there's a large you know base which we are targeting but i think the for me it's 
you know, what I said is what we will feel proud is if we are the first choice of any parent when the kid turns, you know, that 10, 11 years old, that the moon should be the name which comes to their mind when they think about, you know, starting to give pocket money to their children. So I, I think if we can, as a brand, as an institution, you know, we achieve that rest, everything else will follow from there. No, great. I think this is a great vision. And I really, all of us at Waterbridge wish you luck as you build scale. Uh, so thanks, Mukund and Vineet, for your time. It was really lovely talking to you and hope our listeners enjoy this as well. Have a great 2023 and keep building towards 2030 and beyond. Thank you, Ashish, for having thanks, us. Ashish, Thank you. And thanks for all the support for Waterbridge Ventures as well in, you know, supporting us. And, and we all look forward to, you know, working closely together over our vision for 2030. Great. Thanks. Thank you for listening to That One Idea, a podcast series produced by Waterbridge Ventures, recorded at our studio office in Bangalore. Waterbridge Ventures is a leading early-stage VC fund in India, partnering with mission-oriented founders building game-changing businesses. The fund invests up to $3 million across seed to Series A rounds. With over 32 investments in five years, Waterbridge has backed leading companies like Magic Pin, Unacademy, Doubtnut, Shalo, and City Mall, among many others. With over $250 million in assets under management, Waterbridge also runs India's leading seed investment program called Fast Forward. The Fast Forward program invests up to $1 million in seed stage companies with a seven-day turnaround time to all founder pitches. Head to waterbridge.vc to learn more.